Sure. My name is Tom Shackelford, and I served in the United States Air Force from on active duty from 1968 to 1972. And uh, after being discharged from active duty, I served three years in the active reserve at Rickenbacker Air Force Base in Columbus. I served uh, the entire time in the Judge Advocate General Corps, which means the legal branch of the United States Air Force. When in your life did you know that you wanted to join the military? Oh, I think probably, you know, preteen years because uh, members of my family had served in the military from uh, the time of the Civil War through World War I and World War II. Um, so I felt it was my responsibility to do my part. Plus, I came from a very small town where basically, if you were healthy, everybody got drafted into the Army. And I decided uh, when I went to college that uh, if I were going to go in and serve, I wanted to go in as an officer. How was it transferring from civilian life to military life? Uh, for me, it really wasn't difficult at all because of um, the fact that I was serving as an attorney in the Air Force, uh, a lot of the experience that I gained in the Air Force translated very well into civilian practice here in Mason. Um, was your training or your boot camp any different than anybody else's because you were going as a lawyer rather than a ground soldier? Um, no, not, um, not as an attorney, but uh, as an officer, your training, your uh, you know, it was called summer camp at that time. And, uh, you know, it was geared toward officers being leaders. And, uh, you know, surprisingly to me, the discipline was very strict and the physical training was difficult. Um, how were you involved in the Cold War while at the White Man Air Force Base? Well, actually, uh, you know, there were two wars going on at the time. Everybody knows about the Vietnam War. Many people either um, weren't aware of or currently weren't aware of or have forgotten the Cold War. But um, I was stationed two years at Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, in the middle of nowhere. With the closest town was called Knob Noster with uh, one traffic light when we got there. And the reason it was in a fairly remote area was because uh, the main mission of the base was uh, Minuteman ICBM or intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missiles. So each missile carried uh, multiple warheads, nuclear warheads. Um, so the firepower would, could be absolutely devastating from, from a human life point of view. Uh, serving in Japan was a, a unique experience because uh, you know, you're immersed in a foreign culture, even though you're on an Air Force base. I happen to uh, live in a Japanese home off the base because there was not base housing available uh, for uh, my wife and I when I got there. Uh, but one of the interesting parts or unique was I worked with a Japanese legal advisor and uh, a Japanese secretary because we had um, lots of dealings with the Japanese community, uh, especially the uh, local police. How did the Japanese, were they, I didn't know if they were, were they still like bitter about World War II or were they very welcoming or did they just, you know, it's more American? No, they, they were extremely friendly. You know, on a one-on-one -on -one or family to family, uh, they were very gracious. Um, you know, they would always welcome you and if you were going to their home, there was only one, one incident, uh, or one individual, I should say, in, in this city, Misawa City, which was about 40,000 at that time. One guy who, who the, <clears throat> the people who lived there said he was a little, you know, not right, <laughs> and probably because of uh, military, his military service. But he would, he would yell at you and gesture, and you know, of course you didn't know what he said. But <laughs> probably wasn't anything real nice. <laughs> As a legal officer, um, when I was stationed at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, uh, the surrounding area had uh, 
many turkey farms, and, and I was never really very familiar with turkeys, uh, other than I know they were good to eat on Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, uh, it, there were literally thousands of turkeys on these turkey farms, and uh, uh, the missile sites uh, were over a 90 square mile area, and in order to get the crew members, these are two officers that live 35 feet under the ground for three days. They are uh, in a, an egg-shaped container, steel, hardened, and I mean, they're surrounded by hardened concrete. Um, and, you know, they have the responsibility if the order ever came to turn the switches that would send the world into a nuclear holocaust. So it is an extremely tense duty. Um, you would have uh, uh, exercises where everyone on the base didn't know if it was an exercise or the real thing. And we were told early on that if, if the missiles start, started flying, you know, one of the places that the, the Soviet missiles would hit would be, would be our base. So basically, it would be obliterated. So when they had these alerts, uh, you might be in church, and a red light would start flashing on and off, and then sirens would start, and guys would were in flight suits, and because uh, we also had bombers at the base part of the time, B-58 bombers, uh, loaded with nuclear weapons also. So uh, you never knew when that was going to happen whether it was a real thing or not. And sometimes it, it, the, the, called, they called an alert went at different levels. The last level would be launch the missiles and launch the, the bombers. So, uh, you know, we, we dealt with situations in, involving uh, the alert. I mean, actually, I remember the house that we lived in on base would, uh, when they had these alerts at night and when the bombers were there, the, the walls would actually, because of all these engines, it was tankers and bombers and all of them starting up and starting to move, um, the walls would just shake, vibrate, because the force of those engines was just so great. But I got off track. One of the interesting <laughs> things that happened regarding the turkeys was that uh, one day, uh, you know, we were doing our normal legal work, and the base commander calls my boss and, uh, into his office and uh, says there's an urgent situation involving one of the uh, owners of the, the turkey farms um, because he, he was uh, extremely upset because he said the Air Force had destroyed a lot of his turkeys by flying aircraft over his turkey farm. Well, what I didn't know about turkeys is they're probably the dumbest thing ever God ever created. <laughs> when they panic, they'll run up to a fence or a building or whatever and just start stacking up and smothering each other or scratching. And once the meat's scratched, it's no longer able to be sold. So these turkeys were all stacking up, and this, this farmer was extremely irate. So. The base commander tells my boss, send somebody out there and, and talk to this guy. Well, my boss says to me, go out and talk to this guy. And so we took an Air Force vehicle and I had a driver and we get out and pull, it's way out in the country and we pull up this lane and there's this uh, very angry in appearance uh, man standing there with a rifle in his hands. So uh, the sergeant who was also worked in the legal office and was a driver, uh, looks at me and he said, do we get out or not? You know, because we didn't know what this guy was gonna do. And actually when we got out, he pointed the rifle at us. Um, but in any event, uh, we were able to defuse the situation. And we would get claims like that in, in the legal office that we had to process back that uh, you're serving your country and everybody else is doing the same thing. It uh, uh, makes you appreciate more of what military, people in the military are doing, especially uh, men and women, and 
Iraq and Afghanistan today, the sacrifices that are made. I didn't have anybody shooting at me, but it was uh, four years out of my life and out of my professional career. And uh, I have no regrets. I got tremendous uh, experience as an attorney that immediately I could apply in civilian life.